uh, commerce here. This started in the Montebello area, uh, and the Montebello Police Department uh, was uh, the handling agency, and uh, the highest rate of speed that we've seen in this pursuit is about 50 miles an hour. It's been on surface streets the whole time. Uh, however, the driver has been driving slightly erratic at times, going wrong side of the road, uh, jumping into those turn pockets, running red lights, just like we're seeing here, and making our way now still northbound through commerce uh, on Atlantic, coming up on Everton, um, and uh, this has just been the, uh, the the pace of the pursuit here. Air 18 uh, uh, police helicopter overhead is calling the pursuit for those uh, ground units so they can focus on driving and keeping eyes on the vehicle. But here coming up on stop traffic, uh, that's the five freeway that uh, is right under them right now. But stop traffic here, we'll have to see what the driver decides to do, but it looks like they're just gonna hold behind that traffic, not gonna jump onto the wrong side of the road or anything there. Uh, actually, there they go, uh, up onto the curb, and it looks like they're gonna try to go over that center divider uh, into those opposing lanes or stop those uh, officers now getting out of their vehicle uh, and uh, here we go once again that traffic cleared out and uh, we're on the move and it looks like we're going to be going onto the freeway now this is the first time this pursuit's been on the freeway it looks like we're going to be getting onto the five northbound uh, from Atlantic here if this continues uh, but at right now we're on Camfield or te Telegraph from Atlantic and it looks like we're going to be uh, getting on that five northbound now what can happen here when we're in a pursuit like this uh, is that they can ask for CHP to take over the pursuit now that it's on the freeway, as that's the California Highway Patrol's jurisdiction, um, and they know their freeways best, and uh, they are happy to take over these pursuits uh, if it gets into their, their jurisdiction onto those freeways, as they're more suited for it, and they, uh, they, they train for that. The Montebello Police Department is really good in Montebello, uh, but the CHP is uh, the uh, agency for the freeways. Speeding up a little bit now, 60 miles an hour, just a little faster than traffic, uh, this white SUV, uh, we're still trying to figure the want or assignment just doing a great job at trying to get that information now uh, but still about 45 miles an hour 50 miles an hour here northbound five uh, through Atlantic now uh, working our way through commerce now this time of day uh, Glenn and Lou we see a little more traffic as people uh, start to head home for the day especially on a Friday uh, so we'll have to see what happens as, as uh, this continues but right now on the five it's pretty uh, open uh, all the way up for about five miles and then uh, then some pretty heavy traffic. So we'll have to see what happens as it continues. But you can see the police department still on their the uh, suspect's tail. Uh, they did not go into that track team mode, into that center divider there. And it looks like we're going to be uh, jumping onto this uh, off-ramp, it might be, or it might just be the carryover um, for, uh, let's see here, the 710, it looks like. Uh, so we are making our way now northbound. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, this pursuit's just uh, it's a very low rates of speed right now, 60 miles an hour. I'm just trying to listen to the scanners to see if I can get any more info. But uh, now jumping all the way over from that number one lane into that number four lane. Um, and uh, we'll have to see what happens here. The suspect's been kind of circling the area of Montebello. It made its way out a few times. Wow, just uh, almost uh, getting close to that bumper of that blue car there. That car probably didn't see it coming up on its tail. Uh, this car now, uh, the suspect getting a little more... Uh, uh, assertive with their driving, weaving in and out of traffic. We're going to try to peek into that uh, driver window. I apologize for this uh, zoom real quick, but we'll uh, we'll use our doubler to try to get into the front of that vehicle. It looks like we do have a, a, a driver. I don't see any other occupants in the vehicle. Uh, black shirt, gray pants, so that's something that the uh, airship overhead is keeping tabs on of this driver of this uh, white uh, BMW here, so that if this pursuit does end and the uh, suspect does run to the from the vehicle, the officers on the ground have a good idea of uh, what that suspect is wearing, so it's a little easier for them to fi find that suspect. It looks like we're going to be getting off the freeway here or coming to a stop in this uh, gore point here, coming to a stop now. We'll see what happens. Uh, the police department uh, looks like they may have backed off. Uh, yeah, no police behind the vehicle at this time, so we'll have to see what happens as this pursuit continues. But right now, the suspect in that gore point for the off-ramp here, 710, right about 3rd Street in East Los Angeles. No units behind it, but we'll have to see what happens with that airship still overhead.
That's right. Yeah, running into that traffic there, just driving like normal as if nothing had happened. That air unit's still overhead. Uh, the driver uh, is aware that we are here, that's for sure, and uh, aware that the uh, the airship's there as well, looking out their window just moments ago. Uh, but uh, no ground units behind this vehicle, but that air unit is still tracking from above, making those call-outs to agencies in the area uh, to see if any of them will take over the pursuit as we uh, continue here, making that... Uh, that move into that number two lane there a little uh assertive there uh kind of cutting off that black car that was behind it uh but just sitting in this northbound 710 traffic as we uh come up to the 60 here um and uh that it's uh it's, it's a little strange not having those black and whites behind it but this could be a strategy that they're using to uh to try to get this driver to stop or pull over and uh, get out of the vehicle so that they can uh, apprehend the suspect at a later time but with that air head over or that air unit overhead uh they're uh the suspect's not going to get away that's for sure that air unit uh, is keeping eyes on them just like we are uh still making those call outs i'm hearing them on the different scanners um and they're just uh they're monitoring the situation chp uh is still monitoring the situation as well and uh sometimes it just takes a few minutes as well to get those um, those units into the area. They could be working on other calls or uh, other incidences in the area. Uh, but uh, sitting in this traffic here going about 10 miles an hour, um, which even on surface streets wasn't uncommon. The suspect was driving pretty slowly, even though he was erratic um, at moments. Uh, but we're just going to continue this now back into the area of Monterey Park. You can see that shadow of that air unit go over every once in a while. They're holding a little higher of an altitude, but uh, keeping that, or, but still calling out to those um, ground units on the ground. Um, and that's that's the uh, name of the game nowadays with the pursuits is having that air unit overhead takes a lot of the stress off the officers on the ground so they can back away and hopefully get the driver to drive a little safer um, and that air unit can stay overhead and uh, keep an eye on them and call out uh, anything that may be occurring to both the officers on the ground as well as those dispatchers and the um, and the command staff as well who are uh, making decisions on what's next for the pursuit. So uh, getting another agency involved, um, deciding if they're going to use a spike strip or a, uh, a or something like a uh, pit maneuver to bring this to an end. Uh, that pit maneuver is not really uh, the best option at this point, even if there were uh, officers behind the vehicle just due to the speeds. Uh, but it is something that those, uh, those supervisors and those command staff are considering at all times and trying to find the perfect moment to use those tactics to bring this to a successful and a peaceful end with without uh, harming any of the public uh, in the area. Uh, but luckily in this case, uh, Glenn and Lou, the, the driver is um, driving uh, fairly normally, um, not putting uh, many lives at risk. Um, however, the police department uh, still has a want out for this suspect uh, for unknown reasons at this time. We're still trying to figure out why they went in pursuit with this vehicle. Uh, but uh, so they're, they're still monitoring this and still wanting to apprehend this suspect uh, when they get the chance. Uh, that not I haven't heard anything and just looking through that that uh, driver window there uh, it looks like there might be some items in that passenger seat but I don't see anyone in there or any movement so uh, quite possibly just the driver um, at this time um, and uh, from when uh, we first heard this pursuit uh, we didn't hear of anyone uh, get out of the vehicle or anything of that nature so quite possibly just the driver in there um, and that's who they are looking to apprehend at this point okay. Uh, that's right. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a little uh, strange in that sense. Maybe the uh, suspect is trying to see if maybe any officers will come up on that uh, suspect. Maybe they have a decision to make up here as we get uh, near this interchange of which freeway to go to. Uh, but right now, it, it, it even sounds like the air unit is breaking off from this pursuit. They're no longer going to be following this from above. So maybe the uh, officers on the ground with a... Uh, with, uh, uh, the decisions of their command staff decided, hey, we uh, we maybe know where this license plate comes back to, and we can just get this suspect at a later time, and then let this suspect drive on their way for now, and uh, not put any more of the public at risk. So right now, no units behind the vehicle, and the air unit's actually pulling off as well, so we'll have to see what happens uh, as this continues into the afternoon.
Yeah, that's that's right. And I, I'm, I'm not hearing it on the scanners anymore, so that may just be the case of uh, they've, they've decided that this isn't worth it at this point. They don't want to put people in harm's way, especially on the freeways. We can get up to some high speeds if it continues on the freeway. Uh, and so th at this point, they're just going to uh, step back and uh, then uh, look to apprehend this uh, suspect or, or get this vehicle back at a different time when it's safer to do so. It is a BMW SUV. I'm not sure of the exact uh, make uh, or the exact model of it, uh, but these vehicles, even though um, they are SUVs, they do have some uh, power to them. So uh, that is something that they do uh, keep in mind when they're when they're uh, checking on the uh, on the validity of a pursuit or how long they want to continue it. Is what danger that the vehicle itself can put the public in and. A uh, vehicle like this, we're already up to 80 miles an hour, and it looks like nothing right now on the freeway. Uh, but that could be very dangerous uh, in the in the in the wrong circumstances. Uh, so there, that's even another consideration that the watch commanders and uh, different uh, supervisors have to make: is 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 this uh, performance vehicle, a BMW, uh, worth pursuing right now? The suspect's going to be coming up on some traffic here as we continue westbound on the 10 freeway, getting more into the East LA area. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens here. Slamming on the brakes there, having to weave around that that white car. Uh, following this truck now, uh, but uh, still no air unit overhead, uh, no ground units right behind, but the CHP is aware of this vehicle and uh, might be keeping an eye out for them. Uh, they do use uh, inter agency communication uh, methods to communicate uh, with different agencies. Montebello can hand off to the CHP. The CHP can hand off to other agencies in the area. Looks like we're under this overpass now, so we'll have to see what happens uh, uh, when this suspect pops out. But it looks like that suspect's just holding into that traffic there, uh, right behind this white pickup. And uh, there it is. And we'll try to get a better shot inside that inside that, um, that windshield for you. And it looks like we were talking about Glenn and Lou, uh, just the driver in there. I don't see a passenger, and it doesn't look like there's anyone in that back uh, seat as well. So this uh, driver's just taking a stroll now through into the East LA, almost downtown area, and we'll have to just uh, see where this goes as the afternoon uh, as the afternoon uh, progresses. Uh, but the the great thing is that here in Sky Five, we have that ability to follow from above and uh, not lose the suspect, uh, no matter where he goes, due to our vantage point. So we'll continue to follow it for you guys and uh, definitely bring you the latest as it becomes available as we follow this vehicle and this pursuit. 